Welcome back, guys. Today, we're going to be creating tests for our Elk stack installation, meaning that make sure it's installed, make sure it's started, make sure it's listening on the ports. Um, we've already created tests before regarding the Apache and Flask tests and tests, excuse me. And I'm going to go ahead and be, I'm going to go ahead and be using the same tests on, on uh, Elk stack as well, except for they're not going to be under web. They're going to be under a logger because that's how we have it in our kitchen. Uh, configuration as well as our top.sls. So uh, with that said, let's go ahead and get started. So what we'll do is we will create a new folder name, uh, in this case, logger. So we will say that's a new file and make sure everything is installed. And I'd like to go refer to the testing for documentation for this to make sure that stuff are in fact installed. Uh, so host, I can just do a, there it is, package is installed. That's what we're looking for. So host.package, whatever it is, is installed. And it's exactly the same way we wrote the earlier test. If you look under Apache, we say def, whatever it is, and then the service, HTTPD. Instead of service, we're going to be using host because this is a, a uh, package rather than a um, rather than a service. So if you look at the service example, let's go down here. Uh, it's class service and then the service, whatever it is, is enabled. So we could say package, whatever it is, is enabled. So when is new table? So let's say def test file beat install. I don't think I need, yeah, I, need, I do need the package. I'm going to go ahead and change this to Python. And since I'm including package, I'm not going to do host. I'm just going to do package dot uh, package is equal to Uh, we'll say it's file beat. Do I have this lowercase? I don't think I need it to be uppercase. Uh, yeah, I do have a lowercase. So let's go ahead and change it to lowercase here because that conflicts with the actual class package. So assert package is installed. Dot is installed. And I don't think, yep, yeah, that's fine. Oh, I don't need to, this isn't actually callable. So I believe that should be it according to, yep. So whatever it is, is installed. Okay, great. Before we continue, I want to um, demonstrate, not demonstrate, I want to avoid an error that I've been running into specifically installing Logstash. Um, the service and start Logstash uh, for me was failing because for some reason, I was having the same issue with Elasticsearch and everything else where the service file for systemd wasn't being installed. And I tracked down the problem to the uh, new method that Salt uses to install the package. Again, I'll have to uh, cut a ticket for this. The Right now, it use, um, what it does that is that systemd, it, it uses the systemd scope. And because systemd... Uh, by default, uh, when Salt tries to install a large amount of packages, systemd will actually kill the process. Um, they have a man page here, you know, sees the kill mode. So um, what you can do is, you know, you can set the config option systemd.use scope. However, this isn't a, a kitchen VM, so it's not meant to last very long. It gets destroyed and then, and then brought back up. So that option will be reset all the time. So rather than using package.installed, I'm going to go ahead and use um, uh, cmd.run again as well for logstash, and then we should be able to go from there. Um, all right, so this file here, um, once you go ahead and have this in there, you can just go ahead and name it test underscore filebeat.py. And then from there on, we should be able to go ahead and uh, test out the package. So that being said, this was the error that I ran into. Uh, it says that the service name logstash is not available and so on. So if you do run into that, uh, you can just go ahead and log into the actual machine 
and reinstall the package via yum. Uh, I've d I went to debug mode, I installed exactly the way um, Salt does it, and I'm not sure why, but on a first time uh, VM creation, it doesn't actually install the service files that comes with the package. So, and to demonstrate what it actually does, you can do sudo systemd run uh, use scope. I believe it was use scope. Uh, I may have it up here somewhere. Actually, I can just search systemd run. Let me go and do that real quick. There it is. Right there. So, yeah. So it does the systemd run hyphen hyphen scope yum install log stash. And I guess we would have to um, use the config option, but again, I can't save that. It's just not permanent here in this case. So that's going to be a problem. All right, so instead, that's what I'm going to do here. So sudo systemd run install log stash, and then it's going to say it's already installed. So I'm just going to do uh, remove and then and then reinstall it. And that should go ahead and install the service files as well. And I'll cut a ticket with um, with salt stack repo as well from here on. Okay, so our it's almost downloaded. It hasn't installed just yet. So there we go. Should be installing in a minute. There we go. All right. So now if we do sudo service log stash status, we should at least see a service. Yep, there it is. So we at least see a service. Now if we can do a kitchen verify, um, it should go ahead and just verify everything from uh, log stash. So I'm going to go ahead and it's just, sorry, it's just going to go ahead and verify everything that we have in the test um, pi, the file bit that we've created. So I'm going to go ahead and um, I'm going to pause here and then I'll be back uh, as soon as this is over. Okay, and we're back. So it did run the test and it did pass. Um, there are some errors here, and this is particularly the way the test infrastructure that I've set up. Uh, it says that package fixture is deprecated, test for backend fixture is deprecated, uh, meaning that this particular fixture is conf test, uh, test infra, backend, get backends, and so on. This is deprecated. So I'm going to go ahead. Um, I'll figure out a way to. Uh, to work with the new uh, modules, the new class, this host.package and host.backend, and uh, we'll see how it goes uh, from there on. So, but regardless, this is a uh, this is a past test. So right now, what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and mark this off. Uh, we installed FileBeat, and then we're going to do further testing. So for FileBeat, we also need to make sure that it is uh, started. So see def test file beat and uh, start service now this is python and i know i didn't explain this too much before um if you don't have a python background uh, you don't need to worry uh, too much basically what we're doing is we're defining a function and then we're including the um the test infra package here through the back end now uh, we're going to be doing that for the service here for to make sure that it started. And all we're doing is we're just assert, asserting that the package is either installed and packages either started and so on. That's it. That's pretty much it. Um, if you don't have a, uh, if you want to increase your Python knowledge, I'll have a uh, Team Treehouse uh, link on my on my description below. You can go ahead and use that. It, it's a referral. It helps me with my Team Treehouse account. Um, it doesn't really hurt, hurt you in any way. Uh, give it a shot. It's it's definitely a paid service, and it's $25 a month, which can be a lot, uh, depending on where you are, what kind of currency you're in. Um, again, there are also a lot of free other uh, free services out there that help you teach Python, that help you learn Python. So uh, look into those as well. You go through some Googling, you'll find a lot. Learn Python the hard way is obviously one of the best ones out there. Uh, but yeah, do take a look at it. So right now what we're gonna do is we're gonna make sure that the service is actually started as well. So if we go back to the test infra docs here, um, let me see, that's not it, that's it right there. So 
think it's just, I think it's under service. So is running. That's what we want. We want is running. So we'll basically do the same thing. So this is going to be service and service is equal to service. And we'll say in this case, file date and assert service dot is running. And that's all we needed to do. So now we can go ahead and rerun kitchen verify. This shouldn't take that long, uh, particularly because we've already gone through all of this. Um, so I wouldn't need to do anything of that sort. And actually in the last log, we see that it tried to reinstall the package. I'm not sure why. Again, this is pro. Oh, because it's running as command dot run now instead of instead of um, package dot install like these guys are. So we'll see a lot of that. Um, anyway, so this won't take that long. Oh, we're running into an error. It says that invalid syntax. Now, that's a good thing. So service.in is running is invalid syntax. So, oh, huh, that's because I spelled a cert wrong, weirdly, okay. All right, there we go. So the, yep, the host is already up, it's already gonna log in, and then we've got two tests that passed. Now this is very annoying. We get two errors for for every test that we have. So we're gonna see a lot of, or not errors, so we get two warnings for every test we have. So we're gonna see a lot of that. Um, hopefully we don't have to do anything of the sort to ignore them, but it is what it is. All right, so now that we've got file beats in there, so let's go ahead and put everything else in there as well. So we've got file beat. I keep going back to my video editing window. All right, so let's do the same thing for um, Elasticsearch, and, and we could just do this. So we just get all the names and make that Elasticsearch. And this is going to be test Elasticsearch.py. And for Elasticsearch, we also need to make sure it's listening on a port, but let's just stick with this for a little bit and then and then go from there. And I think I actually saved this on the wrong place. Where did I save this as? Because it's not here. Um, it is in fact in the PyCache, okay. So yeah, I don't need it here in the PyCache. Um, in fact, I need it elsewhere. So delete this file. I need it to be in the, yeah, I need it to be in logger, not PyCache. Thank you, oops. Let's rename that to test elastic search. All right, so, and we'll do the same thing for Kibana and Logstash. So, Let's do logger, new file. This is for, let's see, Kibana is next. Test Kibana. And the last one is Logstash, so. Logstash. So test log stash dot pi. All right. Now for the for the two for Elasticsearch and Kibana, we need to make sure that we are listening. And I believe I've got one for that already. It's called a socket. I'm just gonna go ahead and take the flask one, and then I'll just replace the port number and the name flask for this. Will be for Elasticsearch port and the port is uh, 9200. And we'll do the same thing for the Kibana as well. So let's get a Kibana here. And we'll say this is Kibana's port, which is 5601. So we'll just rename the function. And 
let's rename or redo the port 5601 and that should be it. All right, so let me go ahead and test them out again. Again, I'll probably see many of the of the uh, mornings now. <laughs> As I thought. Okay, so there's two things that actually failed. And there's the two ports. So if you look at Task Kibana port and Task Elasticsearch port, they are not listening. Um, so we need to make sure, find out why they're not listening. In fact, they may be a different port altogether. So we will see. Actually, in this case, um, 5601 might be actually listening, but it's not, uh, it's not 0000. zero, zero, zero. It's 127001. So let's check both of those and go from there. So let's do, let's go to kitchen login. And I know these warnings are a little annoying. Uh, we'll get through them though. So all right. And if we look here, we've got we've always got vagrant. This is nine two zero zero. See it's Java in this case. Um nine two zero zero, but it's running as one twenty seven zero zero one. And 5601 is probably here somewhere. I just don't see it. There it is right there. And that's running as node. Well, it's probably also not the Java, but it's running as node. Um, let's see if there, there's probably configurations that we need to see, which is why it's running as 127.0.0.1. So etc log stash and log stash yaml. Ah, see, the default host is in fact 127.0.0.1, which is why we're seeing that. So we need to change our tests instead of saying 0.0.0.1, so 127.0.0.1, and do the same thing for Elasticsearch, 127.0.0.1. Now it's listening to itself. That's the host port. If we go back to our to our uh, netstat here, yeah. So the local address is this. Um, it's listening for. This is IPv6, so uh, nine, this ninety two hundred isn't actually doing anything. This is also IPv6. So we need to figure out why uh, Elasticsearch isn't listening properly to the foreign address of 0000. zero, zero, zero. I'm gonna go ahead and diagnose this a little bit. Um, I'm not sure if this is right, so I'm gonna undo this real quick, um, as well as for Kibana. Oops. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and test this out. Uh, I'm gonna figure out why it's not listening properly and then reconfigure it, and then I'll pick it back up from there. Okay, so I came back and it did work. Um, so a few things I need to change. For Elasticsearch, the binding port is 127.0.0.1 colon 9200. For Kibana, I also did it was 127.0.0.1 colon 5601. For Kibana, I needed to actually go in and change the configuration file. So when you install Kibana, you want to make sure you have a file dot managed that manages configuration files. Um, the configuration file lives in etc. So if you um, go to etc kibana and then uh, this is the configuration file I just need to comment uncomment this uh, this uh, server port 5601 server port local host or sorry server host local host and then this elasticsearch uh, URL which is right here and that's it and then kibana works and elasticsearch works all of my uh, tests pass and we are good to go. So we only had one, actually a few major, major hiccups. Uh, first of all, I didn't know the ports for these. I should have specified that in my test. Uh, second of all, the other major hiccup I had was regarding the log stash installation, this particularly. This was very annoying. Um, but now I know, so we can go ahead and move forward from here on up. 
All right, so we've almost pretty much finished with this. We've got everything, uh, all the tests passing, except for we haven't tested for Java 8 yet. And that's a different test because we installed it via the RPM package manager, not via yum install from a repo. So that's different. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and research this one a bit because I've never done that. So that you'll find that in the next video. So uh, we'll see you guys then.